Before we dig in on a beautiful Friday afternoon when I'm actually doing the filming, this is the Iglesia Sutiava. So if you're looking at a map, we're in the city of Leon in the western part of Nicaragua on the very western extent of the city. This is the last of the city churches. It is also my favorite with my favorite plaza. I don't know if it's my favorite church from an architectural standpoint. It's my favorite general church area. It's got the best uh, food and plaza and open spaces and parking and access to the street combination of things compared to anyone else. Each of the churches has something unique. Saragossa has the best architecture. Uh, Guadalupe has the best food. But when you put everything together, I think Sutiava is the best overall. Of course, a lot of people like the cathedral downtown. And once my new camera gear arrives, I'm planning on getting out and filming all these locations a little bit more as a chance to work with the camera and uh, get some special footage for you guys. So I hope a lot of cool stuff is coming very soon. The camera should be here in a couple days in my real time for making the show. So all right, I did get asked just recently, because we talk about this a bit, and in the recent shorts especially, we've talked uh, quite a bit about the number of things that we've seen in the house. And we have had quite a bit of stuff appearing in the house that we haven't had before, meaning critters that have come in. So let me give you quick a little rundown on what we have discovered in our house since the last time we did an episode where we talked about what insects and stuff came into the house, because things have changed just a little bit for us. Most significant is we have had a number, like maybe eight or more, tarantulas come into our house. Prior to living in Sutiava, we had never had a single one in our house. We had seen them outside, but never inside the house, never on the house, never on our grounds. Now we have them in the house with some regularity, but this has all happened within the last two months. So that's a big change. Something has changed. We have a lot of things we've never seen before or barely ever seen before that now we're seeing regularly. We also have frogs in the house relatively often, but those are good. It's weird to have frogs in your house for sure, but they don't hurt anything. They're like the geckos. They eat little things that you otherwise don't want in your house. They're not harmful in any way. They don't do anything. They can't bite you. So they're perfect. So don't worry about frogs. Let them be in the house. They're not poisonous. We're talking frogs, not toads. Cane toads are invasive here. They're very dangerous for your dogs, for anyone's dogs, for cats, everything. They're dangerous for you, for children. So you gotta get rid of the cane toads. One way or another, they can't be in your house. But the frogs, they're great. And the geckos, the gekitos, you want your house covered in them. They don't do anything bad. They do a million things good and they're adorable. Don't hurt them, don't let your dogs hurt them, don't let your cat chase them. Do everything you can not to harass them because they are there for you. They're eating all the things you don't want in your house. They are your best friends. They are so awesome. So invite those in all you can. Even little spiders, the things that don't worry you at all, I'm really good with having those in the house as well because they help take out the gnats and stuff. But in general, uh, we haven't had very many things in our house until the last few months. I have no idea what's changed, but we've had a number of tarantulas. We've had no really scared to say this on the show because you know it's going to happen tomorrow because i say it right now but we have not had a scorpion in this house yet not a single one we've been here for more than a year uh here in, in sutiava but what we have had is whip scorpions some people call them uh whip uh, spiders they have lots of names uh but they are not a spider and they are not a scorpion and they do not sting they are not dangerous in any way they are good they're just terrifying looking we had one in the hotel three years ago. We had one uh, in this house in Sutiava when we first moved in a year ago. Nothing since then. Two, the only two I've ever seen in my life. They are so weird and exotic for an American to ever encounter. Scorpions are like rare, but they're an American thing. Spiders, of course you see. Tarantulas are surprising because I've never lived in a place that had tarantulas, but I've had huge spiders before. I've had a huntsman in Greece, but the, the whip, scorpions are so terrifying looking and so different than anything else that th that is truly exotic and like what do you do uh, and we've had a couple of those three maybe uh recently so i'm beginning to expect them luckily my kids don't freak out too much uh luciana just ignores them so because you, you don't want to kill them and i've been not killing the tarantulas too i've been shooing them out of the house as best i can and uh, trying not to let them get hurt um so hopefully they're okay because they're, they're not harmful right and they do a lot of good in the yard so you do want them out there realistically uh but a little bit crazy before I get past the topic of my yard, I have to mention this because this is incredible. 
just a few days ago, we were outside hanging out in the evening. Uh, my friend David was over. We were just having a few tonias. We were sitting outside and the dogs were going absolutely crazy out in the yard, barking up a tree. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. And it went on for hours. So finally we went out. I brought some like high powered flashlights, went outside, lit up the tree. And there was a Andean porcupine at the top of the tree. Now, this is a species that is uh, officially in like American stuff, says never seen north of Panama. But I did talk to Yvonne and she said there was a spotting of one in San Juan del Sur. So this was a really exciting spot, but it was not completely unprecedented. This is the farthest north and the farthest west, west one has ever been reported being seen ever. There's one in a zoo in St. Louis. So this is really, really amazing. But so we saw an Andean, not a Mexican dwarf, multiple people identified it an actual andean porcupine completely healthy on top of one of the palm trees in our yard in sutiava we've also had a couple of snakes in the house now not a problem one was a king snake and that was in our kitchen and it went it, somehow it went into a trap and i carried it out we had another one in our shower and i don't think it was a king snake but i don't know what it was but not something i had to worry about but it disappeared of its own accord before we were able to figure out what to do with it. But so snakes in the house have been a thing. Tiny ones, nothing to worry about. They're eating things you don't want. That's great. We have had a couple mice. We had to put out traps for them. Humane traps, I carried them somewhere. Um, but that has gone away as a problem. And in general, we don't get too much in the house. We have had some lizards in the house like, you know, iguanas very rare and they're clean and everything. And you just chase them out of the house. It's a lot like having a stray cat in the house that happens to be a lizard. Um, so we're getting more and more of these things in the house. But in general, I really want you to remember, this is a house where one, you've seen videos of my yard. If you have not seen those videos, go and watch some of my older videos. I do so many videos where I'm standing out in the yard and you can see the garden and all the wildlife. We have a lot of wildlife around our house. So, so that's the starting point. With all of that wildlife, all that grass, those big trees, we're next to a nursery. We have a bunch of wild space around the, around the house. So we have a lot of wildlife nearby. Even with all of that, and our house, which has no screens on the majority of windows. Bedrooms do have screens on some, but in general, the, the windows are just metal bars. So the cat can come and go, a lizard can come and go, a small dog could theoretically come and go, like a porcupine could come and go, bats fly in and out of the house, no problem. So all those things can easily get it. Those windows never close. That's really important. They never close. So anything that can come and go is coming and going. So anything can get in. Plus, all throughout the day, we leave our doors open. I don't mean unlatched. I don't mean unlocked. I mean wide open. And the house is at grade. So if you're in the grass and you go onto our tile, basically the house is at the same level as the grass. So anything that wants to come in, a snake, a mouse, a tarantula, they have no effort. They just walk from the grass straight into the house as easy as can be. And it's just flat tiled. The house interior spills into the exterior. There's not even a line to designate where it's inside or outside. A wild animal would come in without even knowing it came in. And we would only say it's inside because we, we have this arbitrary line that we consider inside versus outside. And our doors are open on all sides. Our front door is open, our side door is open, our back door is open. We have different gardens in each one. So there's animals that would want to pass from one garden to another would come through the house. So this is so open, so incredibly open for there to only be this tiny number of insects, of, of weird bugs or whatever that have come into the house uh, is, is I think pretty good. Um, you know, we have a kitchen that's just open. So anything that wants to try to get into our garbage, it's gonna come right in. It's because it sits right by an open door. Uh, if any food gets left out on the counter, and it does for sure, anything can just come right in and get into it. And we would expect at least cats and stuff to do that, but we've not yet seen a stray cat come in. We have not had any type of significant wildlife come into the house other than the things that I've mentioned. Um, so in general, we really don't have to worry about it. It's amazing how little stuff actually is out there and comes in and putting up no effort to block it out. We have to deal with this tiny amount and it's mostly good stuff that we don't want to harm. We just want to shoo it outside. If we were really concerned and didn't want to have any of the stuff in the house, of course, screens on windows, 
not leaving doors wide open, uh, more air conditioning. There's a lot of things you could do to significantly reduce uh, what does come into the house. And remember, we live in the country. We're on the outskirts of the barrio. So what's coming into our place is many times what you would see in a city house or a development house. We're just, we're just in a much more wild area. So there's more opportunity. There's a lot more things outside the house to potentially come in compared to others. We also have a lot of squirrels in the yard, for example, but none of them ever encroach on the house. Now the other question that was asked and everyone needs to know about this is mosquitoes. So mosquitoes are certainly here. They're pretty much everywhere in the world so you're never going to completely escape them. One thing I always say is having lived in New York, having lived in Texas, I don't know any place in the United States that I've ever lived that doesn't have wildly more mosquitoes than Nicaragua. I've never been to a place in Nicaragua where I said wow there's a lot of mosquitoes. I mean into it like one little spot sure but like in a large like a city or a neighborhood like nothing like that it's never heavy with mosquitoes that said there are mosquitoes but mostly you notice them because you have an outdoor lifestyle that you may not have somewhere else when i lived in texas and we especially during covid we spent an exorbitant amount of time sitting outside because we were home all the time we wanted to hang out we didn't want to be trapped in the house we didn't, couldn't really go places so we sat outside in the yard we had so many mosquitoes that we had to fog the yard three times a day and it did very little to stem the flow of mosquitoes. It was absolutely horrible. Here we never fog, we never treat for it. We do intelligent things like make sure there's no standing water, but we don't do anything to treat for them. Of course, the government does some treating. Uh, and with that, I essentially never notice mosquitoes. So, well, once in a while, I'll have a day where it's like, wow, there's mosquitoes. But in general, it is a very mosquito-free place. Now, Paul notices them a lot more. He uses off all the time, but I think more he's just kind of used to it, doesn't really think about it, just always using it. He uses it when I'm sitting with him and I don't have to do anything and I don't notice any mosquitoes at all. Uh, but in general, mosquitoes here are very low. Now that said, you do have to worry about mosquitoes here because unlike in the United States where they might carry Zika or something like that, which is bad, but not a big deal, what they carry here can be malaria or dengue or chikungunya or maybe even something else. And so you do want to be more aware of the mosquitoes and a little bit more protective of them. And that's why the government takes it very seriously and does so much to eradicate them. And it's very effective. You notice that people put in some effort to reducing mosquitoes, but they put in an effort that goes to a point where people no longer need screens on their windows. So if you think about it, our houses are essentially wide open to the outside world all day long. We're not getting mosquitoes. If we go out in the yard and sit in the yard with shorts on, we start to notice mosquitoes sometimes. Not me, but Paul does. When we're on the beach, I notice things a little bit more, but mostly it's things in the sand, not things in the air. But certainly there's times where it's mosquitoes. But in general, it's it's been a really good, generally mosquito-free outdoor existence for the three years that we've been here. And no matter where I go in Nicaragua, it's mostly the same. You're gonna find isolated spots that do have a lot of mosquitoes, often in areas where they're, that you don't have a municipality that's spraying and dealing with stuff. Uh, but by and large, they are not bad at all. They are often portrayed as being a really significant problem in the region. And mostly this comes from uh, the region in Panama, not here in Nicaragua, where 150 years ago, they were really bad and we didn't have treatments for them and nothing had been done and people were not used to it and it caused a major problem in malaria outbreaks. But here, we really see very few um, actual infections from uh, mosquitoes. We do get them from time to time. Chikungunya comes around, dengue comes around. They're unpleasant, you don't wanna get it. I got dengue two years ago. I lived, obviously. Um, it wasn't a huge deal, but it was, you know, I was certainly sick to quite some degree. Uh, those things are mosquito borne. You can get them. It will come around. But overall, the mosquitoes are not bad. Now, if you're coming from Europe, Europe has like no mosquitoes. You'll notice that there's more mosquitoes. But if you're coming from North America, which is like where mosquitoes were originally created in the depths of hell and sprung forth into life in the Northern Americas, then you will be like so relieved by the low number of mosquitoes here. So given my context historically, I am thrilled to be living in a place finally that has so few mosquitoes that I essentially never have to think about it. But if you're coming from Europe, you may be like, oh, there's still a lot of mosquitoes, but at least it's not like US and Canada, for sure. So it's all perspective, I suppose. But that we don't need to have screens on the windows, that we don't have to worry about it inside our houses most of the time. And when you do see mosquitoes, this is interesting. When we do see them here, I will have one in the room. I'll, I'll know that I got stung and it will often not be noticeable. I don't itch. I don't, I don't even know. I could be bit a whole bunch and be like, oh, there's a bunch of mosquitoes. 
and then there I won't itch at all and I'll be like wow did they did what happened um, and I do have to say there was a day that someone asked me about mosquitoes maybe three months ago and I was like there's hardly any and that very night swarms of mosquitoes came into the house and I was just swatting them everywhere but again none of, none of them made me itch never got bit or, or bit that it made me itch it was really weird but there were tons of them so maybe there's different types of mosquitoes that are very common but don't really bite you I don't know but uh, it's not it's not the problem that you would think. Everybody is worried about it. It's something that just, it seems like we're in the tropics. It must be that they are everywhere, but they are absolutely not. But keep in mind, we're much drier than people imagine. Most of the year, we're like 50, 60% humidity. That's not a great uh, humidity range for mosquitoes. They really like it more humid than that. So that does discourage them to quite some degree. Overall, I would say that the general lack of the animals and, and bugs and things that you don't want coming into your house is is a major draw for the region if you're if you're used to what it's like in North America where you got to have screens where you have to seal up your house your doors have to be closed all the time or all kinds of weird things will come in um, coming to a place like this where you really can have this outdoor lifestyle and sure you might put off on sometimes sure there might be days where you're like ah today's a mosquito day but most of the time you get to be outside and not worry about it at all we have tons of birds and bats that keep these things at bay as well it's fantastic so maybe those things make a difference maybe it's because it's drier maybe it's just because we're in the tropics and there aren't as many bugs in most of the tropics and Panama's an outlier I don't know but for whatever reason coming from the north being down here the the ability to be just outdoors and wide open is fantastic and it's really noticeable that the drop-off in things that will enter your house or cause problems or bite you is is significant you will notice it um, and, and if, you know, we, there are people who've run into other scenarios. Alan rented a house where he happened to be right next to a swampy area and the mosquitoes were atrocious. They couldn't do anything because the mosquitoes were all over their house. So make sure you're being aware of where you're going. Make sure you're in a spot where there aren't tons of mosquitoes. But in general, we have lots of air, right? We have oceans on both sides. We have the lake. Wind whips across and makes things like mosquitoes much, uh, they have a much more challenging life here. So really it's uh, with a little bit of uh, awareness that you do need to look for a place where mosquitoes won't be a problem but you know if you're here in Sutiava chances are it's gonna be great but if you go down just a little ways to the river I bet if you live right along the river you probably get a lot more mosquitoes but up here away from the river really is not a problem at all and like here in the park all this time I've been out here right there's no insects at all there's no flies there's no mosquitoes there's no anything um, now I do need to mention because it's just a normal thing. When we were looking at that uh, porcupine that ended up in our tree, uh, the Andean porcupine, while I was out in the yard in the dark, I stood in an anthill and I got swarmed by ants. I got bit all up my feet, all up my legs. It was horrible. They're not fire ants or anything. They're just normal everyday black ants. So they bit me, it hurt. I was like, this is awful poured some alcohol on it and it was done. I didn't itch the next day. That was it. It's not like fire ants. That would have been absolutely horrific. This was just, it hurt, but not a big deal. So we do have a lot of ants here, but none of them seem to be really nasty ones. I know in the jungle there's really nasty ones, but here where people actually live, we haven't encountered anything that would be problematic at all. So thanks for joining me. Thank you for the question. Like and subscribe. As always, share on social media if you would. Tell your friends and family about the show. If you would like to support me uh, directly, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's just my name. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon, and it helps make all of this possible, all the locations that I go to and the camera gear and the time that I'm able to put into this. Every little bit helps a lot. I really appreciate all of my sponsors. Thank you so much, and I will see all of you tomorrow.